Well, man, you've been waiting a while. You got the fight set. You know what's going on. Yeah. How, how are you feeling right now, knowing you know what, what's happening next? Uh, I'm ready to uh, get Hinn and Brow behind me. You know, this will be the third training camp I've trained for him, which kind of makes it easy at the same time. You know, um, obviously get to watch the tape on my own fights and his fights and see what he's going to change up as well as you know what I'm going to do. But I'm excited to uh, demolish him again and, and put him behind me. You know, to where I don't have to think about fighting him again. I was going to say, man, like I can see the negatives. Obviously, man, you're tired of dealing with this guy, but. Is there, is there any positives? Like, are you excited, like, to, to, to people that are like, hey, man, you know, they doubt you, or they, you know, the greatest upset ever, or whatever. Are you excited to, to beat him again and, and silence all that? I'm definitely excited for the fight. I mean, no matter who the fight's going to be, I'm excited for it. You know, I'm, I get to go in the, uh, the octagon and defend my belt in front of millions of people. So, I mean, there's no negative in it. You know, I mean, is it is it bad to send a brow again? No. I, I mean, it almost makes it easier in my mind. You know, I get to train for someone that I've already trained for for a long time and uh, that I know that I can beat. You know, that I know that I'm in his head and that I'm a better fighter than he is. So, really, there's no negatives. Talk to me about the first fight. I mean, people did say, uh, I thought it was going to be a good fight. Mm -hmm. I did pick him, and I was like, you know, mm -hmm. he's a tough guy. But of course. when you look back on that, I mean, is there something that just went especially right for you or especially wrong for him that you want? Or did things play out just the way you thought they would? Um, you know, I, th I thought it would probably be a little bit of a closer of a fight just by watching Burrell's fights and... Uh, and just know, know how dominant of a champion he was. Um, I knew that the way I was going to be able to beat him was with my speed and the, the, my footwork and just taking advantage of how much slower he is than me. You know, I, I feel like he's too big for the weight class and I'm going to push the cardio and I'm going to push the speed on him and he's just not going to be able to handle it. So I knew that I was going to beat him because of those reasons. That I didn't have to take him down being a wrestler to beat him, that I was going to be able to beat him on my feet because I'm faster. You know? and is it the same fight the second time around? I mean, do you prepare the same way, think you can execute the same way, or is there a different fight? Oh, yes and no. I mean, you always got to be ready to switch it up on the fly. You know, it's not the fact that I solely train for Hinner Brow. I'm just training to get better. I, I feel like a lot of the things that I do will work for most of my opponents. You know, um, obviously you tweak your game plans a little bit depending on who you're fighting, but uh, yeah, you, you kind of train the same, but expect him to, to bring a different game plan as well. So that's why I watch his fights and I watch our fight, what we had, and, and, and think about what he's going to try to change. You know, what would I do if I was going to fight myself kind of deal and be ready for it. So whenever he brings it, I'm just going to be, I've already been drilling it with Dwayne. I've been out here in Colorado this whole week since the fights are out here and uh, been watching tape, going over the game plan and I'm already, I can fight tomorrow. I'm ready. I'm in shape already, you know, so uh, that's just the way, we, the way we roll. We're always getting better. That's awesome. Yeah. Every time I see you get an interview, every time I see your eye get an interview, somebody asks, you know, what's up with the fight? Yeah. What do you think? When you guys hear that, man, I mean, like, are, are you annoyed by it? Is it kind of a compliment that, like, man, they feel like I should fight this guy? Like, what's your take on that, that it always comes up? Um, I mean, obviously, it's a little annoying after you have answered it a hundred times, but ultimately, it's a compliment. You know, it's a compliment to the fact that we have that good of a camp, you know, that we have two guys at 135. We actually have four guys at 135, but two of them that can fight each other for the belt. You know, that's a huge compliment in my mind, and, and the things that we're doing are right. So, you know, you, don't, you got, don't, can't look at too much of the negatives of it. We don't want to fight each other, you know. He's got a fight with Frankie Yeager now that's a, a pretty big deal. It's a big super fight. I feel like it's uh, the right direction for him to, to take big-name fights and, uh, you know, just... Keep, keep, keep up his name. You know, he's got such a big name and so many people love him that, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see this fight happening. What do you think about this $2 million fight with uh, Demetrius Johnson? <laughs> but, I mean, that kind of, this guy is like the most quiet, reserved, like never says anything and then comes up with this. What, what did you think when you heard that? Oh, it's awesome, man. I mean, I'm, I'm always up to, for a challenge, you know, and I, $2 million, or so who's not going to take a fight? You know what I mean? Like, he gets paid a whole lot less than that to fight, so it's kind of funny that he'd say he'd do, do it for $2 million because he knows they're not going to pay him that, you know? <laughs> he don't want to fight me. Um, Is there anybody you wouldn't fight for $2 million? No, I'll fight anybody for, yeah, anybody for $2 million. Are you kidding me? Like, that's life-changing money.